Well, constructive separation is a step between marriage and divorce that I think every person needs to consider because constructive separation says this, when you're having problems in your marriage, and let's just say that there's abuse going on, there, there's something really bad that you can't live with anymore, is you say to your spouse, I love you and I'm committed to the relationship, but I can't live in this environment any longer. It may be that you know, you've know you warned them and they just won't change or you feel endangered because of something that they're doing. It may be financial. It might be emotional. It might be that they're verbally you know, abusive to you or physically abusive or something like that. And rather than divorcing, you know, a lot of people, they, they just think there's marriage and there's divorce. But there really is a step in between called constructive separation. Constructive separation should be a last resort. It, it shouldn't be, you know, all of us suffer in marriage. You know, sometimes people ask me, well, what's the difference between suffering and abuse? We all suffer in marriage. You know, I've suffered because of Karen. She suffers because of me. It's just a rea reality of life, and you can't jump out of a marriage just because you have some discomfort. That's true of every marriage, and the, every great marriage that I know of. These are people that have been through real serious problems that they worked through it, and they became partners in the process. And so you need to stick in there if that's happening. But constructive separation is something that, that there's damage. Abuse means damage. It's not something that I can deal with long term. It's affecting my mental health. It's affecting my emotional and physical health. And I've got to separate from it. A lot of people think, well, if I'm not married, that means I've got to get a divorce. And with billboards and internet divorce and you know, uh, ambulance chasing lawyers out there trying to get you to divorce, it's ridiculous how easy divorce has become in our culture. What we need to do is this. We need to understand that divorce is our last option. But a step before divorce, the last, it re really it should be the, the last thing that we do uh, before divorce, and that is constructive separation. And we say to our spouse, I love you, but I can't live like this. It's, it's hurting me, it's hurting the children, and, and I'm gonna have to separate, I'm live with a, a relative, live you know, at a, maybe at a violent shelter, uh, live on your own in an apartment or something like that, but you're not saying I'm gonna divorce you. What you're saying is I'm not living like this. And until you get help, and I'll go with you to get help, but until you get help and demonstrate real change, I'm not coming back, but I love you. And I don't want a divorce, but I'm not gonna live like this. So I'm, I'm issuing you a warning, and that is you're not gonna get the benefits of marriage until you get your act together. I'm not having sex with you. I'm not washing your dishes. I'm not gonna meet your needs and, and, and be a partner in this relationship until you get your, your act together. And I'll go with you but I'm not gonna put up with this any longer. And then you separate, you, you make sure that the, the abuse or the damage or the problems don't continue, that you're not manipulated, that you're not controlled, that you're not intimidated to come back into the relationship before you're good and ready. And then when that person goes to counseling and they need to demonstrate change, you need to start dating again rather than jumping right back into the relationship. There needs to be sincere repentance and sincere change. And you say, well, you know, I'm glad that you're going to get help. That's fantastic. I want to start dating you again. And over a period of, of months, you know, and hopefully not too long, but a period of months, I want to see real change. And then when you see real change and that you are satisfied that there's not just change, but there's accountability. You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, I've been through abuse and I, you know, I moved out. How do I know it's safe to go back? The fruit of change, number one, they're not blaming anybody. They're not trying to make you feel bad. You've really seen uh, repentance and responsibility and change, and there's accountability. They are willing to make themselves accountable to a pastor, a counselor, someone in their life that if there's a problem, you've got a phone number to call and things can change. When you are not safe to go back is when they're blaming you, they're blaming everybody else. They're not taking responsibility. You haven't seen the fruit of change and they're not willing to become accountable to anybody else. So I'm saying when you get yourself in a bad way in marriage and all these things are dangling out there in our society of easy divorce, I'm telling you this, divorce isn't easy, it's devastating. People say it's, uh, death is easier than divorce. And so don't believe those lies when it says, oh, you know, we're resilient and people go on with their lives. 10 years after divorce, half of all people are still in love with their ex-spouse and they're still hurting about their divorce. So if you think that divorce is easy or we're resilient, you're believing a lie. It's devastating. It's the last thing that we do. And before we divorce, there is a step called constructive separation. And I think it's something that is worthy of your consideration.